Thank you, Lucas, and everyone leave their business cards. As soon as there is another guest professorship, I will forward them. <laughs> and we'll all meet again, yeah? <laughs> So um, Lucas uh, mentioned uh, uh, quite a number of uh, projects that I will be talking about. Uh, um, and my curatorial field uh, actually spreads into sort of three um, main topics like architecture, design, and uh, to a certain extent art in public space. And um, uh, Curating is, is very often, for me, a, a, a way to try to make, uh, make a, a, a current discourse visible or to, to uh, try to, to raise topics in a, in a different way. And uh, when I had the chance to do an exhibition at the Galleria Edes in, in Berlin and in, in, that was later on shown in Vienna too, uh, I tried to stage uh, seven architectural practices that were at their very beginning, so people after they finished studying and, uh, and started uh, working as architecture professionals, but in a very different way, some being very theoretical, some wanting to, to build uh, their first uh, social housing tomorrow. And, uh, and what the goal was, was to, to also try to make some of these biographic uh, things visible and on the other hand to connect these uh, seven Austrian practices. And uh, I invited one of the teams, Harry and Sally, to, to um, uh, make the, the exhibition architecture and they came up with this uh, uh, rope idea that, that sort of built a nest uh, uh, for all of these, and uh, as Lucas was mentioning, he's here in his, out of this exhibition, uh, Heribert Wolfmeier has been teaching here in Linz, Daniela Herold has been teaching here in Linz, uh, Michael Oberst, that they will step over, has been here in Linz, so uh, I think this is an important place for architectural discourse. <laughs> uh, so uh, we had these uh, seven uh, different uh, Positions, uh, uh, for instance, uh, Matthias Del Campo and Span, who, who uh, sort of have a very digital approach, or Lorenz Potocznik, uh, who is uh, uh, working uh, very much in, in, in also participatory uh, projects here in Linz, too. And, um, uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, the, the aim to, to make a, a group show where, where you'd feel the connection and still have very, very different uh, positions. And uh, uh, another uh, uh, tempting uh, thing was when I was commissioned uh, uh, as a uh, when I was commissioner for uh, for the architecture biennale in Sao Paulo in 2007, uh, I selected uh, Feld 72 uh, as the Austrian position. I wanted to have a, a single office, uh, and uh, I selected them for their work. Uh, uh, which is dealing with participation and dealing with public space. And uh, we had a budget of uh, 70,000 euro uh, for everything, including all the fees, all the flights, transportation, whatever. So uh, that made it uh, not easy to think of how could we stage that. And the other thing is um, how can you stage uh, this approach where it's very much about people. So. Uh, we, we all flew with a suitcase to Sao Paulo and, and, and Feld 72 uh, uh, went to buy a lot of uh, window uh, dolls, uh, shop window dolls, and, and, and so we created a public uh, ourselves. And uh, I think uh, uh, these huge shows like Biennale is where you have uh, a tiny moment where you can catch the attention of someone to to get him to come closer and to start to get involved with the content is uh, uh, is such a tricky moment because uh, the the work of Feld 72 contains a lot uh, of things that that uh, uh, you should uh, look at more intensively. But uh, who gives you the time 
if he has a whole Biennale to see in a day. And uh, so this was a very uh, maybe provocative or very offensive way of talking to people, but. Uh, but uh, it really worked, and uh, the other part that I very much liked about uh, their contribution is uh, that was uh, around the time where the, when the mayor of Sao Paulo had all the billboards and advertising removed uh, in all the city of, of Sao Paulo, and um, uh, Town Ziptik had this uh, uh, series of stickers uh, that would uh, sort of advertise their messages uh, throughout the city and uh, if people would take the stickers and travel maybe even throughout the world and people would post these photos on Flickr and then you would uh, yeah, get, uh, get messages from people where they had uh, placed them and, and uh, the message spread around the city like the Copan building in this case. Another thing that uh, Lucas mentioned, and that maybe also as we are at the conference, uh, uh, is uh, important uh, for me to, uh, when it's about curating content. Uh, uh, in Vienna, as a city of culture, you do have a number of lectures every day, you have very active universities, and uh, uh, I sometimes have the feeling it's not easy to attract people and to really get more students to attend a con conference. So I was invited by the Academy of Applied Arts to, uh, to curate a conference on design and uh, uh, I invited Thomas uh, Geisler and Hulga Beile, two friends, to, to do that uh, together with me and we created a, a new way of uh, staging this conference. We invited uh, around 30 speakers uh, and uh, had three rooms and in these three rooms at the same time we would uh, stage 15 minute dialogues. Uh, uh, no slides allowed, no uh, prefabricated presentations. It was only people with the sum of their knowledge uh, and we gave them a question. They knew the question in advance but they were confronted with someone that they maybe had never talked to before, and then you would, uh, uh, and, and the audience uh, would witness this uh, talk. And uh, during this uh, one and a half day, everyone would have to uh, make up his own conference because you had to book into these rooms in advance, which made people uh, really look at the content, look at the speaker's biographies very intensively, uh, and, and give a thought on which themes and topic they wanted to follow, so they could either uh, select that they wanted to follow Paola Antonelli during the one and a half days, or they wanted to follow the topic of education, or simply every time a different room, or stay in the same room for the whole time. And uh, it was very successful, we had uh, 400 people uh, in these three rooms, and. Uh, and uh, it was really fun because uh, you had, uh, in the evening after the conferences, really totally different stories of what people would have learned from these days. So um, we had the chance to, to do the same type of conference uh, the year after. The first year the, the topic was uh, time and the second year the topic was um, the middle. And um, we would, uh, immediately doing again, unfortunately, uh, inviting 30 people is nothing that universities uh, can do really frequently, so uh, we're still raising money to do that somewhere again. Uh, a very classical uh, curatorial approach is uh, um, simply uh, curating as, uh, as selecting and, and, and looking back. Uh, uh, Memphis design uh, to me was, uh, was a very important turn in the, in the history of design and I did this exhibition 10 years ago uh, when postmodernism was really, it was not evitable that it will be discussed as passionately again as it is now after the exhibition at the Victoria and Albert Museum. Uh, so 
uh, I did one exhibition at the Lowe's House in Vienna and uh, uh, the second part was at the Kunsthalle in Krems, which was looking at uh, what the Memphis uh, members was, were doing uh, 20 years uh, after. And uh, I mean, this, this is a, a curating space in, in a very classical member and you, you have an audience and the audience is... Uh, is uh, concentrated and, and confronted with a, a, a visible amount of content. But uh, actually in the, in the last years uh, that had, has really shifted within my work and, and most of the things uh, I'm doing are staged uh, in, in public space, in non-institutional uh, spaces. And this is due to uh, that it is very important to me to speak to a wider audience, and this is what we are, uh, uh, me and my colleague Tulga Bayerle, uh, this is one of the reasons why we founded Vienna Design Week uh, six years ago, and this is also what we try, what we want to achieve, uh, uh, that uh, people understand the terminology of design in a, in a wider sense than an Alessi coffee cup. Uh, so uh, we founded uh, the festival, and um, we do a lot of activities uh, during the year, also outside uh, uh, of Vienna. Uh, for instance, this is uh, a work that we commissioned by For Use, uh, a tape installation at the Tempelhof Airport uh, during the DMY festival. And then every year in fall, uh, we have 10 days of festivals, uh, around 100 events, and uh, around 80% of the festival uh, is uh, curated by us or, or people that we invite uh, to curate. So it's not uh, not so not it's nothing like a fair or not not uh, very similar to other design weeks that uh, uh, mostly show product innovation. Uh, we have um, a laboratory. We have where we have graphic uh, and product designers and and uh, the public can come and, 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 and look at the processes uh, to understand what is it that designers do. Uh, and this is something that, that uh, uh, we, we now witness is, is really uh, loved by the audience. We have uh, always chosen locations uh, that are very accessible and that they are somewhere where there is a, a lot of, of, of traffic and, and, and uh, people that would like accidentally also step into it. And of course we have uh, a lot of uh, children's programs too. Then there is a format that had been call, uh, called Carte Blanche until last year and uh, is now called uh, Stadtarbeit. And actually uh, there is a call run, running for projects uh, until today. Uh, so if you look at the website of Vienna Design Week and you want to play something which is uh, based on the context of uh, social design and, uh, and work in public space, so please do submit today or maybe, maybe even tomorrow. Jury will be on Monday. So this is a project uh, that we had um, uh, during this carte blanche and, and uh, it's one of my favorites, and as I talked to Jane about it uh, yesterday, I, I felt I had to include it and, and talk briefly about it. It was uh, three designers uh, who partly also have a sociological background, and uh, they worked for half a year with uh, three ladies in a nursery home, in a home for retired uh, people. Uh, discussing with these three ladies the, the step of uh, leaving your own home to go to, to go to the nursery home. What do you leave behind? What do you take with you? How is it to adapt to these uh, 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 um, floor plans? Uh, and uh, the, the research that they did uh, and the exhibition was a, was a very nice and convincing part. What was what was really great for the festival is that they uh, had uh, what they call design audiences. So you could uh, uh, book a tour and uh, visit uh, each of the three ladies for ten minutes and discuss it with themselves. And uh, 
And why I like the project so much is also because um, the people who attended uh, this were uh, not uh, only designers, uh, and it was a really wide audience. It was also people who, who took uh, this chance to look at a nursery home and give it a thought uh, if, if they should uh, maybe put their name on the list uh, uh, to get a place there. Uh, so we had a, a total mixture in the audience and, and uh, really interesting questions and of course it's a, it's a unique atmosphere if you, if you uh, go and visit them. And it was also very daring from these uh, three ladies in their three very different rooms. Then we, uh, we initiate uh, and, and uh, partly uh, uh, commission and finance uh, a lot of uh, projects during the festival. And uh, this is uh, uh, two people from the Netherlands, uh, Richard Power and Jet van Sweeten, uh, who uh, built this little house during the course of the festival with things that people would bring them uh, from doors to windows uh, and uh, old TV sets. Uh, and with the festival we spread all around the city, which is another important topic. We, uh, we did the festival because we wanted to give uh, Austrian designers a chance to, to have an international platform to discuss uh, and to, to, to make a, a discourse happen. Uh, but we wanted people to know that they had been in Vienna and not like only in some place. Uh, so we link it very much to the city and to special places in the city and we are not only in the, in the city centre that is uh, very much imperial glamour but also uh, in, in run-down areas, non-gentrificated -gentrif areas uh, such as this was a uh, ballpoint uh, pen fabric. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, factory <laughs> and uh, uh, two architects made a hiring there and then again this was a, a, a thing where, where the festival audience would mingle with the people living in the area and, uh, and, and this makes it, uh, an exchange happen that, that to me personally is very important that people who, who would run away from the term design normally all of a sudden step over some designers, talk with them over three glasses of wine and in the end uh, they have understood that, it, that this is more than, than just beautiful objects. Um, this is a beautiful object, this is a, a cafe that the London based uh, team Postler Ferguson uh, staged in Vienna last year and uh, what I like very much about uh, this one, or why I'm showing this one, is it was the initiative of, uh, of these three guys that they said they wanted to do something in the festival. We said, yeah, well, we have a, a, a closed cafe, a former cafe uh, space, and they said, well, great, we're going to do a cafe. And then they uh, came with the cafe in their suitcases. So three guys, three suitcases contained a whole prefabricated uh, uh, cafe that they then uh, stacked together and, uh, and uh, it was a great place during the festival. Uh, we've worked together with the Italian group Esterni that really involves uh, the people from, from these areas, uh, uh, children, migrants, uh, whoever is, is, is uh, willing to, to work with them. Uh, and they normally uh, we find the place for them where they they uh, have the chance to to speak to people and start this interaction, which is sometimes not very easy. In this case, uh, they had to make a, a, a timetable because children loved the project so much that everyone wanted to join. Um, <coughs> this was another thing that they did in a different year. And then I'll briefly talk about uh, another format, which is. Uh, uh, bringing together uh, designers and uh, manufacturers or uh, uh, small producing uh, companies 
that uh, maybe never had uh, uh, worked with designers uh, before and uh, the goal is not that uh, a, a product uh, occurs but it is about the transfer of knowledge and uh, we've seen a number of really uh, very interesting exchanges and this is also a project that has an uh, afterlife that is important for a festival like us because it, it, something remaining, uh, commissions for the designers, companies that have been convinced that it is worth working with designers or thinking about design. So this is uh, work by Max Maxim Wilczowski, where he took uh, glass and chandelier parts from the archives of uh, uh, Lobmeyer, a shop in Vienna, and he made this uh, city shades. So. Uh, a comment on the place, such as uh, Misha Traxler's uh, uh, thing about the alchemistic uh, uh, processes while doing jewelry, and 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 um, and then they even brew some jewelry. This is a young Polish uh, uh, designer based in Vienna. Uh, with a really hard topic of uh, going to, to an institution in, in Vienna that uh, uh, makes uh, dirndl. Uh, and uh, she came up with a very beautiful idea of a, a stamp machine that would refer to, to uh, the, the dirndl cloth. And uh, this is a project by uh, the Canadian designer Philippe Malouin about uh, the time-consuming production of, uh, of glass uh, with uh, quartz uh, sand and, uh, and he had this uh, machine built by the chandelier builders. And, uh, and then uh, uh, the third thing that I'm, I'm involved in, I'm, I'm heading a jury for art in public space in, in Vienna. Uh, we are a jury for, for four years, and it's including Dirk Luko from Deichtorhal, Letizia Ragalia from the Museum in Bozen, the architect Gregor Eichinger, uh, someone from, from the cultural department of the city of Vienna, and me. And uh, we, on one hand, get some submissions by people uh, that the jury uh, judges. On the other hand, we can uh, commission uh, competitions or projects. and. Uh, uh, this is one uh, project by Karola Dertnik on in a space uh, uh, that we uh, have uh, temporary installations on for half year, in this case one year to see the circle of the plants. It's a place that is dedicated uh, to gay, lesbian and transgender victims of uh, the Nazi regime. and. Uh, I, I think it uh, is a very beautiful work. Um, and the last uh, project is a work by Christian Jankowski, who was a uh, winner of uh, a competition for the subway station at uh, Donauspital, uh, near a hospital. And why I think it fits very well with the topic of curating space is that Christian Jankowski hijacked the, the curator's text, for a curator's manual for the new airport in Berlin, where they wrote the manual for artists to, to uh, think about uh, artistic interventions at this airport. And he simply uh, took out a few quotes and brought them to Vienna. So, something that was really curated for one specific space, left the space, and really makes uh, sense uh, under the beautiful installation uh, at the Donaukanal, uh, the Donauspital subway station. Um, yeah, uh, so this was uh, the, the three columns and uh, nice spot for the end. that don't speak yet, yet German, it says a very important visual as well as emotional reference point. Um, I'm very thankful that uh, you presented right now, uh, Lili, because we have not really touched the world of design in, in the previous discussions we had before. 
you are obviously interbreeding between art and architecture and design. However, design again opens up a completely different field also than the ones we've just discussed before. It's very hard to define, but say, very generally speaking, design is connected to commissioned works, whether it's graphic design or fashion design, or etc. And then you get this expression of, um, you mentioned the word design and people run away. But somehow you, you seem to, in your curatorial work, really to liberate the, the, the term of design. Um, I think this is the, the, the current development. Uh, I mean, this is also why, why something like uh, Memphis historically interests me, because it has opened up possibilities. And, and now I think uh, the discourse in the design scene opens up even more. Uh, something which is most important uh, at the moment is uh, social design, I'd say. So uh, the whole term of, of design is uh, even in a specialist design audience, very unclear at the moment. But still, what we are trying with this festival is to, to give a, a wider public a little more idea of what design can be, product design, experimental. Well, I've got a very pragmatic curator's question. Okay. Um, you, you, you basically developed a brand for Vienna, I mean, with the design week, and you developed a brand and it's something that keeps happening. What is the role of the city in terms of making that whole concept sustainable financially? <laughs> well, the, the, the financial sustainability is... Uh, uh, I, we don't have any basic funding. I mean, every year again, we rely on these people that they need us. And we are that far yet. We have uh, 30,000 people attending the festival. Uh, we have gained international uh, attention. So the city wants us, but we don't have a contract that we get the money every year, which uh, uh, makes it tough. And, and we try to, to have uh, a lot of, of uh, uh, private money also. So. Uh, Public funding is uh, at the moment, I'd say, around 60% uh, of, of the festival, but uh, we operate with a small budget and a small team. Which brings us back actually to the questions you raised in uh, your presentation, Francesca, where also we mentioned the Prinzessin Garden Berlin and certain farms that are being on the cover of the Deutsche Bahn newspaper or something where certain projects become like a brand and blamed even for a city. Yet they're not even supported by the city, or the whole system we have is still very vague and there are thin eyes. Um, are there any actual statistics? Because I mean, every, I would say, the cities of Europe are competing about this whole issue of what's the economic value of the creative industries and mm. the design. Mm. Are there any statistics about the kind of uh, economy? I mean, I know it's been done in places like Offenbach, of all places, in Frankfurt. And, you know, what's the percentage of gross domestic product? How important is the design scene for Vienna? Is, do, you, do you have to gather that information yourself? Or uh, well, partly, of course, there is funding agencies for creative industry, and of course, they do these kind of, uh, of uh, studies. But coming back to your question from before, uh, as, as hard as it may be without having this security, uh, what we really enjoy is uh, to have this freedom in, in curating and in staging things and uh, uh, in, in these six years uh, that has really given us the chance to realize so much without having uh, any pressure or any expe expectations. Uh, uh, of course, uh, what you also mentioned before as an as a answer to a question, uh, we as a, as a festival or as, you, as a brand, as, as you say, uh, have to, to be careful not to be part of, of a system that uh, uses the, the creative class to sort of break ground or bring up rundown areas by going there for three years. Just to respond to Francesca's um, question, the last Liverpool Biennial, uh, the city invested 2.1 million, and the return, I don't know exactly how they calculated this, something about 23 million in terms of tourism, um, hotel, restaurants. Liverpool Biennial. Liverpool Biennial. Yeah. Um, my Thank you. Um, it's very interesting to see uh, 
the range of your projects. And I suppose my question is really about whether you um, have developed different methods for curating fine art, applied art or design and architecture, and also how you might respond to the way that, I mean, some Paul O'Neill, for example, is in his collection with Clyde Doherty talking about the producers of art, curation mm -hmm. as part of production, and whether maybe you could just say something about perhaps the terms commissioning, curating, production, in relation to these mm -hmm. different disciplines that you're working with. Of course, I have uh, sort of established different systems and, and uh, I come from writing and I have uh, st I started writing while I was studying for a daily newspaper. So I did daily newspaper and I, I did architecture magazines. And this is also, I write for a different audience and, 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 and uh, the message uh, will stay the same, but the way that I submit it will be uh, ad adapting to the, to the audience. And, I think this is pretty much the same with curating, with the festival. It's uh, even more that we have to to target uh, a specialists audience at the same time as uh, being attractive for a wide audience. And and, and this is something uh, that uh, that is sometimes really tempting to, to to be interesting for both at the same time uh, without uh, overdoing it for one uh, side and. Uh, and uh, I mean, the terms of commissioning, uh, curating, initiating, uh, it, uh, it's, sometimes it's uh, we find a space, we know the right people to work at this space, uh, and, and we invite them so that this is a curatorial act. Sometimes we have uh, uh, people with a vague idea of uh, what they want to do, and. Uh, and I have the feeling we only initiate it and it develops by itself. And um, sometimes we are really commissioning it, like uh, the, the Tempelhof uh, project by for use, this tape installation thing was uh, what we call Vienna Design Week Embassy, where we present the festival at, uh, at other festivals and, and uh, uh, they are very free to do something uh, that we find is a good uh, example of, of uh, what is done in the festival. Thank you very much.